So this is one of the results from a conference that I did over the summer CD Next with parametric architecture. And it's all done with the tissue add-on. So we're going to look at how we can achieve something like this. So the technique is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. I talk about it actually quite a few times, but I'm just so excited about it every time that I can't wait until I get more chances to share it. So first we create a very simple and straightforward shape of any kinds. So for example, let's get rid of one area here and don't like that element there sticking around too much so let's create something like this add a mirror modifier so we're creating the base shape now all right so in that base shape it can be either as complex or as simple as we would like to make it so in this case we're going to start with something quite simple because i want to demonstrate to you the technique rather than spend all the time generating the shape and it might be just some kind of tunnel let's say or uh, some kind of place where you go in and you check. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. What do we, what do we want to make this? Let's make it a train station or a tube station or a metro station. So, yeah, it's something like log and tubular, right? And then it must have an entrance somewhere. So let's extrude this side. Then control R a couple of times to make a few loop cuts in here. And we probably want to have an area where we... So we have picked this up so we can get through it. And then let's extrude this area here. So that's all we're going to do for now in regards to the base shape. We're going to refine it a little bit later. But now let's jump on and create our very simple panel. So shift A, mesh and plane. Let's move the plane somewhere over here. Go into edit mode and let's subdivide. So control r and then scroll with the middle wheel until we get the number that we're happy with let's say something like this control alt click to select all of these and then go to select menu check or deselect so we deselect every other one and then we just move them up so this is going to be our panel and what's important here is that if we try a simple array modifier and in this case we wanted to go in the other direction by one not by two that it erased nicely right so the end from one side matches the end from the other side pretty well and it does so this is a perfect starting panel let's go ahead and enable tissue in my case it's enabled and first we want to click our panel and then shift click our base mesh click on tessellate you can leave all of these as they are except maybe merge let's select merge and check whether the base plane is the correct one and the component. That's all good. And now press OK. And we get our initial base mesh. So once this tessellation is done, you might notice that we have an error, right? So these panels are rotating in one direction on one side and in a different direction on the other side. So let's move this out here for a second. Then let's select the tissue element. Go into object data properties. Scroll down to the tissue tab and expand rotation. And we want to change the default rotation to active UV. We haven't played with UVs. That's fine. It still helps to create this. Great. So now we have our first tessellation, which is pretty straightforward, right? It's pretty simple. It's essentially every one of these panels onto every one of these bases. So if we get more faces, we should get a nicer pattern. Let's now try to add subdivision surface. And now we have a lot more faces. So click on this item here again, refresh, and we see it coming up again. Now we're still getting some errors. Don't worry, we'll fix these true. Now the most important thing that I believe will start to make our tessellation look a little bit better is to rotate our panel. So click on the component. Right click to go into tab mode, go into top view, select everything, R to rotate and then 90. Go back into object mode, select our tessellation and let's click on refresh. And now all the panels, well most of them, should be going in the opposite direction. Let's fix this issue that we're getting here by simply going into top view, select everything, U in edit mode and unwrap. 
Let's refresh this and now we should come fine. So the UV map is used in order to give directionality to our components. Great, so now we have a very nice starting point, which we can take further by potentially adding another subdivision surface, just so we smooth these things out. And then if you right click, shade all to smooth, and we have something that's already looking quite good. Let's go into material preview mode. Let's add a ground plane, shift A, mesh, and scale it quite a bit down. Now for my material preview mode, I already have some settings that I've pre-created. So let's create a new ground material. Give it some sort of dark color, just so our object stands out a little more. And let's enable wireframe and slightly fade that out, just so we understand what's happening with the wireframing that we're doing here. Great, so that's essentially how it works. From this point on, it's all about editing our base mesh, which is this object here, and editing our component. So let's duplicate both of these. When we duplicate both of them, this is still a tissue object, a tessellation, and it's correctly linked to this object. So now if we go in here and let's start to modify some elements, for example, maybe we don't want this to be so even, so we can pull some faces out and it starts to come out. If we click on this object, go into the tissue panel here and click refresh, you see that it correctly refreshes itself. Whereas this one, if we click on refresh, it's still linked to that object. Very nice feature. So what if we want these ridges to span out further? So we can go to the tissue settings and change the scale. We can change it to something like two. And now they should be spanning twice as far. And what if we want to create more subdivisions? We can do that by simply changing the level of subdivisions of our base mesh. So let's create another one. Click on our tissue object, our tessellation object, and click on refresh. And now we see that we have twice the thickness. From this point on, we can continue to adjust our base mesh and think about how we want to manipulate this in a very specific way. We could start to add more loop cuts, right? So they give us more definition and we can start to move them around in different directions. So let's try some kind of shape like this. Click on this object here, refresh, and we have our newly updated shape. So what if we don't want all the ridges to be the same height? What if we want to have a hierarchy, sub-hierarchy within our ridges? We can do that as well. So I'm going to duplicate this component, so Shift D. Let's duplicate this pretty cool object that we're getting here. And let's move this around so the ground plane covers more of it. And it's very straightforward. All we need to do in this case is drag one of these edges up. So every fifth high point is a little bit higher than the other four high points. So let's test this now. So this component, if we go to the tissue settings in the object data properties, so we can change it out, we can swap out the object. So this is base object and this is our component object. So uncheck this, click the little eyedropper, select this new object, and now we see our beautiful ridges here. It's actually looking really nice really quickly and that's exactly what I want to demonstrate with this specific technique, that it's so easy to come and do something really beautiful. Now, what if we want to start thinking about different faces, different edges, right? So let's move this up a little bit. Select all the edges by alt clicking, all the outer edges. And I'm going to use Mesh Offset, which is part of Mesh Tools. So it comes in your preferences. It's an add-on. It comes bundled with Blender. So look for Mesh Tools, Edit Mesh Tools. And once it's enabled, if once you go into edit mode, edge tools, you should see offset edges. So let's click on it. Then we expand the previous command area, change the width to one. 
and change from offset to extrude. So now we have this very nice extruded edge. And let's move it down. Now let's select this previous edge that we had and go into item. Me increase. Let's increase that to one. So now we should get a very nicely creased object. Let's start moving some areas so they touch the ground and maybe some just span in a completely different directions. That's pretty good. Perhaps we can move this a little bit higher. So now we have the secondary face. So we have the primary, the roof area, and then we have these side faces here. And within these side faces, let's create another loop cut. Control R. That's in the wrong direction. Control R. Let's see. There it is. Select that whole loop cut. We're going to offset it again. Offset, but this time not extrude. We want move. And then go into item, mean increase, set to 1. And maybe instead of 0.1 width, let's do 0.5 width. Now when we did that, it we have to redo the crease bit. And let's try moving some vertices up and down. So we have uh, this nice kind of variation of the definition that we can use for our advantage. So perhaps something along these lines here. That's looking pretty good. Now the other thing that I would like to do is subdivide this more. Although we have to judge how this looks in the tessellation. So let's click on the tessellation. Go to the tissue tab and click refresh. And now we get this crazy thing that again has some faces that don't come in the right direction. So the UV unwrapping might get a little bit more difficult here. And the best way to deal with it is to select a face that, that is more or less square. First, we want to select everything, U, and then reset. Select this face here, U, and then unwrap, and then select all the other faces, U again, and follow active quads. So now let's try to refresh this, which is still linked to our UVs, and they'll work correctly. Uh, we just need to rotate them, although this looks pretty cool as, uh, on its own as well. It's uh, looking very kind of kind of travesque I would like to say but not really anyways so let's try to see how it looks if we run it the other way in fact I'm gonna save this that's the beauty about these kinds of experiments that it is an experiment in a way where you're not quite sure what you're going to end up with I think these are starting to look quite coral and quite uh, ocean-like, right? So they look like some sort of ocean creatures, which is very exciting form. But what I'm particularly interested in is the form-making process of it, or specifically the ease with which we can do all of these shapes. Right, so in the object data options, rotation, we can just shift UV by one, and now they should all go in the correct way. That's much nicer. The scale of it is a little bit too big. So to soften it up in thickness, just change the scale to one. And now that should be more palatable. We can also increase the subdivisions, but be careful with this. Because this is one of the main ways to crash your computer. Because the more subdivisions we get, if you see here on the bottom, uh, we're getting a lot more vertices and triangles, right? So. 663. Oh, it's actually showing less. I think it's uh, some kind of error. Maybe it's like 2 million. Anyways. We do have a slight issue here, which is this edge, right? So what do we do with the edge? Does it continue on its own different thing or does it do a completely separate thing? In other words, how do we have this sense of continuity go the way around? Or do we say that we actually don't have the edge right and the edge is not this kind of tessellation but it's a more solid let's say aluminium or some kind of other panels so what we can do is separate these two face loops so right click separate selection click on this object here again and we want to choose a new base object so that's going to be just the top the bottom it's going to be this different element here and there is one little struggle, which is how we deal with these edges here. 
if you notice, they don't quite meet as smoothly as they would in there. But if we put this onto here, it should fairly match. So we can use the object origin to snap these perfectly. So shift S, cursor to select it. Then select this object, shift S, selection to cursor. Now they're snapping, but yes, you see this kind of error that we have here along the edges. They don't quite align. And that is because these are separate elements. So we could do another trick that might work a little bit better without having to apply this mesh because that's the easiest thing we can do is we can apply the subdivision and then you just use a part of that. Instead, let's select everything here again. Select these two faces, control I and just keep these selected. We have to swap out our base object again. Now it's going to do the whole thing, but instead of the whole thing, if we scroll down in tissue, selective, and we only want to do it on selected faces. So now it's done it on the right faces and it's done it more correctly. Now I still see a little bit of a gap and that might be because of the way that we design our component and there's this sort of gap. So we can slight drag this down to bring it more in line. And we need to add definitely more subdivisions to this object that we have here. We might want to drag this down a little bit more somewhere over here that's it that's what i wanted to show you guys pretty exciting technique if you want to find out more about it on patreon i do have the whole cd next presentation which is about an hour and a half long onto which we get to this level of detail here the rendering part did take a little bit longer if you are interested in that do let me know and i'll be happy to make a video on that but more about the shape and how we're subdividing this in this way you can see that the process is quite similar, but clearly we also go a little bit into geometry nodes, but we also play a little bit more with the actual shape, so we get a little bit more variations. Thanks very much, and see you guys next time.